Thank you all for coming. Oh, hi. Hi. Wow, I was not expecting that. Uh, thank you all for coming out today. My name is Kristen Green, uh, music director for the show, as well as this month's director. Thank you. <laughs> wow, you guys are, this is great. <laughs> Thank you guys. Today is a very special day. It is the 80th consecutive monthly show for It's All Been Done Radio Hour. It is the 50th episode of Daniel Kravitz's Chosen One and the premiere of the fourth volume of that story. When the recording of this hits the podcast next year, it will be our 400th podcast episode. Now, yeah, normally we present several segments and commercials depicting a variety of stories in a radio style serial format. Today, the full 80 minutes is just this one tale. The musical itself was a feat, written more than a year ago during the pandemic by our show's creator, Jerome Wetzel. I then composed 10 new songs and arranged the original theme song, which was written by Nathan Haley. Jerome and I wrote the lyrics, and I've been rehearsing with the actors since last summer. Uh, I don't know if some of you know how the show works, but we only have one rehearsal day a month, and then we have the performance day. So that is what we had to rehearse. And what these performers have done with that limited rehearsal time is nothing short of incredible. I can't say thank you to them enough for all the work they put in on their own. I did what I could to help them, but some live far away and some, you know, have kids and families and are in school. So a lot of this was done on their own time. So thank you to them for that. The characters in today's show have been through a lot, but as mentioned, this is volume four premiere. Their journey is not over yet. So I hope that you will come back and you will see the rest of volume four over the next couple of years. And especially, I hope that you enjoy today's performance. And now, without further ado, it's All Been Done Radio Hour. Tonight, we proudly present the volume four premiere of Daniel Kravitz's Chosen One, entitled Two Worlds. Act One. It has been two years since the death of Daniel Kravitz, and his friends have struggled to find their own paths without him. I was born in the city of Columbus, Ohio. Worked at an antique shop, and I fell in with my boss he got some magic skills and then he was killed so now i am left alone yes i am completely alone i'm the head of the mighty ulp the ultimate evil we must defeat no matter the cost this war cannot be lost i'm abby reynolds and this is my feat my name is grezitha green i am big and scary and mean abby reynolds is my best friend to the death i will defend abby reynolds and our entire team Augustus Armentrout Helping monsters is what I'm about We fought a bloody war And bore the course for sure Now it's time to forge another
My name is Rufus Reginald Rochester. I allowed all of this to fester. Losing my chosen ones, my mentoring is done. And now I run a little store. Yes, my life has become a bore. Thank God. Together we were once a team. But that ran out of steam. Still we carry on. Our fate is now for God. I still see Daniel in my dreams. All right, grass it back to our team. Abby meets with her senior team at the new ULP headquarters in southern Nunavut, Canada, a sprawling, cold base with massive bunkers for troops that can quickly be deployed all over the world, as well as lots of empty land around them so no enemies can approach undetected. Status report, Alfredo. I believe I have finally perfected the Chosen One spell. It wears off after a few hours, but it is full strength, just like the real Chosen One, and can be recast as needed. So we don't even need the portals anymore? Uh, perhaps not, but I applaud your help in getting the technology working, Misty. I admit I am not as good with computers as I am with magic. Thanks. It, it's no big deal. Always good to have options. Now... Your chosen one power spell. Is it not amulet strength? Oh, no, Stephanie. Not amulet strength. Just regular chosen one strength. Du merci. That is wonderful news, Alfredo. Though, keep working on getting it up to amulet strength. Of course, Abby. I'm not sure that is a good idea. He'll I'm make sure it's safe. No one will get hurt again under my watch. Absolutely. I won't perform the spell until I am sure it will not kill the person we are getting the power of. Right. What else? Uh, Miss Reynolds, we still haven't been able to locate the new Chosen One. Whoever was tapped after Daniel died, but... If you just give us a few more resources... No need, Misty. With Alfredo's spell, we don't need the new Chosen One. We can create our own indefinitely. And lots of them. Wait, uh, I thought I was your Chosen One? There's no need to put all our eggs in one basket, Jeline. Yes, Jeline! I am as mighty and fierce as you without any magic, so we don't just rely on you. Since you now have the Chosen Ones, I? Might I finally return to my ranch? Absolutely not, Voldaire. (sighs) You posing as Daniel at sites around the world has been an invaluable tool in keeping belief alive that he survives. I... uh, But you don't need him anymore, right? Daniel Kravitz is a legend. He will always be needed in that capacity. Uh, Sure, I... But I miss my stables. Uh, And you said you'd let me rebuild them after I... I remember, Voldaire. And I will. When we defeat the ultimate evil. All right. I... Stephanie, how is your progress on locating the ultimate evil? None to speak of. Alexis has found no evidence of the ultimate evil in the subworlds, and every place I've tracked it to using historical documents has come up empty. I... Don't I... make fun of his eye. I wasn't, I. I was just saying the ultimate evil hasn't been heard from directly in generations. How long is generations, Voldaire? Well, I don't know, Misty. But a long, long time, if you ask me, I... Try harder, Stephanie. We can't serve our purpose if it cannot be found. I know, Miss Reynolds. I'm doing my best. It doesn't seem like that's been good enough. Misty, since we don't need your project any longer, you can assist Stephanie. I still think it might be important to... Those are my orders. Yes, Miss Reynolds. If we can't find anything on the ultimate evil here, surely there are records in the subworlds. Uh, But Alexis said he didn't find... I know what he said, Voldaire. You think Alexis may have lied, I? I don't know. Probably not, but we don't need to take that chance. Grezit, how is army preparation going? The latest batch has completed basic training, increasing our ranks to nearly 400. Our forces are ready for battle, Abby Reynolds. 
They are most fierce. If anyone from the subworlds dares to attack us again, we will now be ready for them. Why wait for them to strike? We know an entry point near the largest remaining settlement, right? Let's end this once and for all. It's not worth the risk to leave them as they are. We have, have not discussed invasion, Abby Reynolds. I thought you said your soldiers were ready. But yes, of course, but Alex We has to- don't invade and conquer. Excuse me, Stephanie. Did you have something to say? It's too much. The ULP is not a war machine. I told you when you stepped your up into Your objections power- have been noted, Stephanie, and dismissed. Repeatedly. Frankly, I'm getting pretty pissed off at the way you question my judgment again and again. Well, Ms. Reynolds, I'm pretty pissed off at the disgrace that the ULP has become. If Daniel could see you now, he Do not be... speak to Abby Reynolds this way, Stephanie Garcia! I can defend myself, Gresset. Watch your tone, Stephanie. I'm your boss. Or I was. Get out, you're fired. Merda to ça, I quit. Alfredo, follow and put a tracking spell on her. I want to make sure she doesn't go anywhere or tell anyone anything that can expose us. Right away, Miss Reynolds. The rest of you dismissed. Miss Reynolds, if I may... I said dismissed! All right, I... Heavy is the head that wears the crown In the face of a ruler always wears a frown It's not what I asked for, this life it's far more Than I thought I could ever turn around This wasn't supposed to be where I went I followed Daniel Shore, he was heaven sent Everything to me, with him I wanted to be For my dreams that was the extent But I am the ULP It's one true queen bee In charge of all the others here around I can clearly see As they bend the knee That I am finally on solid ground I am me Who'd have ever thought years ago that I'd have the strength to wear a general's clothes? And yet the sound of the voices gathered around reinforces what I already know. That I am the ULP, it's one true queen bee. In charge of all the others here around I can clearly see As they bend the knee That I am finally on solid ground I am me I can see the difference I will make. Our enemies are numerous, but they will break. As I rise so high, no more will I be a weak and a helpless snowflake. It's one true queen bee In charge of all the others here around I can clearly see As they bend the knee That I am finally on solid ground I am me I
be Alfredo catches up to Stephanie just as she's about to board a ULP plane headed for supplies in the United States. She carries a small duffel with all the possessions she cares to take. Stephanie, wait! Alfredo, aren't you supposed to be sneaking up behind me and casting a tracking spell? How did you know? It's what we did to Novir and to Arnold when they left. I I'm sorry, Stephanie. Uh, Abby was angry. Uh, she'll get past it. Uh, come back and apologize. I don't want to, Alfredo. You've been a vital part of leading this group for the past year. And that's how I know it's time to move on. What Abby is doing, this isn't the ULP that I signed up for. She's trying to save the world once and for all. Putin, at what cost? Invading the subworlds? You know how much work Alexis has done down there to rebuild a peaceful society that we can work with. <laughs> She's afraid. So am I. You think I'm not? I was there for the attack. I still can't walk without a limb. I was there too. I know. I never want to be in a fight like that again. She's trying to prevent that. She's doing it the wrong way. I can't be here for this. You shouldn't be either. My place is, is in the ULP. She's using you, you know. I know. But this is what I signed up for. Sort of. A chance to secure the world against any non-human that threatened it. Daniel managed to do that with grace and compassion. Abby. Uh, Abby has her own methods. And that's what I can't be a part of. Where will you go? The ULP is important. The chosen one is important. This place is not serving that. Someone needs to. You're going to start a rival ULP? Not exactly, but someone needs to take up the cause, the real cause. Are you going to tell Abby? No. I'm afraid of what she might ask me to do to you if she found out. And that's exactly why it's time to go, Alfredo. You ever realize that? Come find me. I will, Stephanie Garcia. Be well. You too. Au revoir. Goodbye. Down in the subworlds. Look around us, see those people. They're not monsters more than we, building families, living their lives. What a joy to be wild and free. It's not easy down here in darkness. Up above us, a big old world craving bright light, looking for purpose, wishing we could be unfurled. I will help them much as I can. They're my people like human beings, understanding. Common groundwork. Think of how much that could mean. One day we'll go up and live among them. Monsters, humans, peace will stem Until that one day we'll toil down here And try not to be what the humans fear Mothers, brothers, fathers and daughters just like the world above, one thing connects us all. We live our lives holding the power of love. But humans aren't ready to hear their stories, to 
understand them to be their friends. That's why I'm here to find a unified end. Alexis, phone call. Is it Tamara? No. Stephanie Garcia again. I'll take it. I'll be right outside if you need me. <sighs> Stephanie, how are you? Not that great, Alexis. Why? What happened? Well, for one thing, Abby just fired me. No, she didn't. She did. I know you two haven't been seeing eye to eye lately, and I can't anymore. Because, you know, I'm missing an eye. <laughs> Not funny. It's my battle injury. I can laugh about it if I want. You don't see me joking about my (sighs) limp. Well, no. But anyway, Abby can't... She's going to invade and conquer the subworlds. What? That's her plan. She's built an army, and she's decided it's not worth it to leave a potential threat lingering. Anyone here that would attack the humans is dead. Daniel killed them and left them too injured to do any harm. All we have now are those who won't fight, the elderly, parents, and children. A few of those who resisted Mambo are capable, sure, but- She knows. She doesn't care. But that just- I don't know if she's worried about the kids growing up and seeking revenge or what, but she's decided to wipe them all out. You have to convince her not to do this. She won't listen to me. She hasn't ever listened to me. But you have to at least- All I can do is warn you which is what I'm doing. How many in her army? More than 400. Well armed and trained. Plus the Chosen One spell is better than ever, so I don't know, it's- 400 Chosen Ones with military grade weapons? We can't stand up to that! She'll desecrate us easily! I know. And she knows exactly where our settlement is! Drat! Can you come and- My presence would not make a difference. Still, it would be nice to have you here. I appreciate that, Alexis, but I think I can be more useful elsewhere. You're not just giving up? How long have you known me? Of course not. All right, Stephanie. Thanks for the heads up. Of course, Alexis. Be safe. You as well. Alexis sits for a long moment, staring at the phone and letting the news sink in. Karnak! Yes, Alexis? We need to evacuate everyone. Evacuate? We we only just got running water. It doesn't matter. This place is no longer safe. An army is coming. A- an army? Who was The ULP. Bring... I thought they were your chums. As did I. We can't just abandon everything we created here. I do not wish to either. Perhaps if we found more of those in hiding, strong beings who could defend us, but as we are now, we don't stand a chance. There are thousands of us, and they're not in any shape to move a great distance. I know, Karnak, but we have no choice. We have to try. In a small antique shop in Brightside, Ohio. Your coffee, Rufus. Thanks, Nan. How's business today? Uh, About the same as ever. Slow. (laughs) Yeah, you've really changed, Rufus. I know I have, Nan. I'm not sure it's a good thing. And why not? We used to have... Passion. Vigor. I don't have those things anymore, because last night I would say... (laughs) With me, you do. With your work... mm. Ah, yes. Well, I've had that in my earlier career, and it didn't end so well, now did it? I think it's probably best I don't pursue those things any further. (sighs) Rufus, I know you don't want to tell me exactly what happened, but... I'm sorry, Nan, I really don't. I just want to lead a simple, normal life. 
If what happened was so bad that you want to leave it completely behind, why did you reopen Kravitz Antiques? You could have gone anywhere, but you chose to come back here. I guess I thought I owed it to Daniel as penance. Penance for what? It doesn't matter any longer. I'm here with you and this shop. I'm happy. Are you, though? Yes, Nan, I really am. All right. Well, I've got to get back to work. I'll see you tonight? Yes, until this evening. The simple, quiet life is the life for me. No monsters or magic, as peaceful as can be. The simple, quiet life is where I want to dwell. Owning a little shop with the things I sell. Bright side is a pretty place, full of families and joy and smiles. You wave to your neighbors as they go the extra mile. This was once a home for me, the best time of my life. And now it is again away from all the strife. The simple, quiet life is a life for me. No danger or death, it's as peaceful as can be. The simple, quiet life is where I want to dwell. Owning a little shop with the things I sell. I've had many homes in my time, many places I've laid to rest. But the one where I am now is certainly the best Here was where I grew Closer to Regina Daniel Abbey Gresit, I can think of no place finer A simple quiet life is a life for me no monsters or magic, as peaceful as can be. The simple, quiet life is where I want to dwell. Owning a little shop with the things I sell. A simple, quiet life is where I am now. And if I have any choice, this is my last stand. Hello, can I help? Oh, Stephanie. Hi, Rufus. Get out. Is that any way to greet an old friend? I'm sorry, but I'm just not interested anymore. I... She didn't send me. Oh. Well, good. I've quit the ULP. Congratulations. Thank you. So, how is everyone? Not good. Abby... Look, she's in charge? Been... Even if we aren't in the organization anymore, we shouldn't disparage her behind her back. It's just not the kind of She's person... going to march on the subworlds. Pardon me? She's going to slaughter them all. But why? It's mostly children and the infirm left. She doesn't want to leave the door open for possible threats in the future. But that's... Insane? Frankly, yes. Now, Rufus, what we're going to do is... No, we're I never to agreed to anything. In fact, I believe I specifically told you to get out. Putain, we are the only ones who might be able to stop her. How is an old man and a woman with a limp supposed to stop an army? I am still very capable, as I'm sure are you. I wish you the best of luck in doing so. Excuse me? If I can provide you a protection artifact for you, or I've worked up a few spells that could no, be... No, you must come with me. No, this isn't my fight. But I need It's your not help. my fight. But I'm done. I said... I'm done. Stephanie, it has been lovely seeing you, but it's time for you to leave. Rufus, you are... Get 
out now. Fine. Somewhere else. So this is death. It's not what I thought it would be. Where's my beloved dog and all of my family? Okay, I never had a dog. But still I don't understand Is this all there is? Because it's very bland Over there a barren tree Here an empty stream No birds to see What a frickin' dream So this is death I can't believe my eyes I don't know what I expected But this is a surprise no meadow of butterflies, big white puffy clouds, angels playing harps, way too frickin' loud. I guess I should count my blessings, that it's not a fiery pit. Still, if this isn't hell, as heaven it is shit I've been here how long And not encountered a soul There's nothing for me to fear But still, what's my role? Maybe this is really hell An empty, lonely place for someone like me Who would kill for a friendly face All of my life long all I wanted was to be alone Well, now that's what I've got And all I do is be moan So this is death Is this really all that there is? No reunions, no friends not even a single kid I've been sold a raw deal I'd rather be alive There's nothing for me here No way for me to thrive So yes, this is death I guess I'll accept my fate What choice do I have? Clearly it's too late So this is death. 
I might as well sit on this rock Nothing to do here now But play with my Daniel? <laughs> Please don't Please don't Daniel Hi, Daniel. <laughs> oh my gosh, you look so, so different. Well, this is the real me. <laughs> the one I never had the courage to show you or anyone. But... You know it's me. Oh, you of all people know. Is it? Is it really you? No, or, or did he... I promise. I promise. No more lies. No more deceptions. This is just me as I really am. Prove it. Well, how? I don't know. Well, tell me something only Josh would know. Well, I... Remember that one boys' night we had? Okay, well, which one? Dude, there were so many. It was December, and, and the girl in the bowling alley was only wearing... Oh, my utensil! Yeah! <laughs> oh, she really needed more clothes. I disagree. <laughs> Josh! Daniel, it's so good to see you. But, I mean, so if, if you're here, then you're... I've been here since the monsters attacked your antique shop and killed me. Oh, I knew it! I'm that asshole that even wore your face. I He's knew. not the problem. Wait, what do you mean? There's, there's a problem? Yes. Y you didn't realize? Um, <laughs> realize what? How long do you think you've been here, Daniel? I don't know, a few days? Uh, I mean, maybe a week. It's been more than two years. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I, I, I just arrived. Oh, this place. It can do funny things to you. Time doesn't work the same way it does for the living. Especially if you don't want it to. I, wait, don't want it to? There are aspects of here that you can manipulate. I don't, I'm, I'm not man manipulating anything. Not consciously, no. Maybe that's the wrong word, but but you've been sitting here alone for a long, long time. I haven't even seen anyone. Well, look now. Daniel blinks, and suddenly he realizes the landscape mere feet in front of him had been blurry. It clears, and he sees a larger world. People, animal, monsters, many in their own little bubbles, none paying attention to him. Oh. <laughs> Wow! Yeah. You were isolated because you chose to be. Oh my, oh my god. Wait, so, wait, so is everyone here? My family? Oh, my, my parents? Oh, I need to find my no, husband. No, 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 Daniel, they aren't. Your parents left this place a long time ago. What do you mean? I I'm not sure where to begin. Well, let's start where we are then. Heaven... Oh. No, no. <laughs> Neither of those. This is a holding place for those with unfinished business. Some call it the after. <laughs> no, but my, no, my business is finished. I was the chosen one. I saved everyone. Boom. No, Daniel. It's not over for you. No, yes it is. There's still no, some- No, Josh, listen. I'm- <laughs> I'm dead. So it, it doesn't get much more finished than that. Daniel just... I feel... I, I, I feel like I need to take a walk. So uh, do you feel like going for a walk, Josh? I, I'd rather... A walk? Yeah. Let's go. But Daniel, I, we should... I need to walk. Sure. Act 2. A few days later, in the ULP bunker up in Canada... Where are our troops? They'll be here. Uh, we're just a little early. That is not an excuse, Misty Tanner. Soldiers should be eager for battle. They should be early and ready to go. Not everyone thinks like you, Gretchen. That is true. Many people are far less glorious. What are you going to say to inspire them? Inspire them? Yes, you're their general, Gretchen. You need to rile them up. Get them excited. The thought of war will not be enough to get them excited? Uh, maybe, maybe not. But 
If you give a rousing speech, that might help. He doesn't need a rousing speech because we don't need all those soldiers at all. I am the chosen one. I should be going by myself. Ha! You think puny you can take on a whole subworld of non-humans alone? Daniel Kravitz did it when they were at much greater strength. You are not a fraction of the chosen one that Daniel Kravitz was. Daniel also had an amulet that amplified his power and killed him. True, but I'm not fighting the warrior class. These monsters will be easier. You underestimate the subworlds, Jeline Santiago, and you do so at your own peril. I'm not afraid. You should be. Well, that's why we have a whole army to back her up, right? Each soldier with their own chosen one powers. Yes, that is the plan. But you may be right, Misty Tanner. Our army is made of humans, and humans are not as fierce as Gresset the Green. They might need some words of inspirement. Here they come. The doors in the room below them, which the trio overlooks from a balcony above, bang open. In march hundreds of soldiers in neat rows with military precision, taking their place in the cavernous chamber. Your army, Grezit. Hello, my army! You look most fierce, ooh, especially you. But we can be fiercer And I, Grezit the Green, will now inspire you with a song. <laughs> It's a great day for war, a great day for war. We don't even need to know what we're fighting for. Oh, it's a great day for war, a great day for war. If you are a coward, then there is a door! Battle is glorious, bloodlust is best. There's nothing better when it spurts on your chest. Mm-hmm. We'll tear them and shred them into teeny tiny pieces, then wrap them as gifts. Give them to our nieces! <laughs> it's a great day for war, a great day for war. Who even cares what we're fighting for? Oh, it's a great day for war. A great day for war. Our deeds they will write and sing about even more. Gather your weapons. Sharpen your teeth. Write up a will for possessions to bequeath. For we might not return from this fight. We may die a grisly death. But the only regret we will have is if we don't do our best! Rah! It's a great day for war, a great day for war. We don't even need to know what we're fighting for. Oh, it's a great day for war, a great day for war. More glorious than Taylor Swift's folklore! <laughs> Gather, my brethren, sip of this ale. Let's march forth and conquer. We cannot fail. I am so mighty, and you can be too. Let's tear open a chest and let their guns go. It's a great day for war. A great day for war. Who even cares what we're fighting for? It's a great day for war! A great day for war! This is the end of my song, there is no more! Do you think that inspired them, Misty Tanner? I think it did the job, Grezit. I don't know why you can't sing. <clears throat> Jeline, 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 don't make me kill you just because I can. Uh, we Jeline, better let Abby Jeline. know we're ready to march. Back in the after.
I knew. See, I knew that this wasn't heaven. How? Abby isn't here. Abby's not dead. Yeah, but it, I mean, if it was my heaven, she'd be here. Maybe that's why time wasn't moving for you. You were waiting for her. Yeah, and I'll wait as long as I need to. You can't afford to wait. We're not talking about that. We're talking about here. All right. What do you want to know about it? Well, what was your unfinished business? My friends? All I wanted to do was help you guys. No, and you did. I mean, more than you can know. I played a small role. I, I died before things got really bad. But you inspired me, Josh. I mean, without your sacrifice, I'm not sure I could have even risen to the challenge of doing what needed to be done. Yes, you could have. I'm not sure. And even when it was you, but you know, it wasn't you, uh, I, I think I always knew that it wasn't you. I know. But I can tell this is you, though. It is me. Well, that's what I said, Brosif. So about my per- What is there to do around here for fun? Huh? You know, sports, games, man stuff. Huh. Something to help you and me pass the time until Abby gets here. Daniel, there are important- I said, I don't want to talk about that. We have to. Right now? Because I thought time didn't work the same here. You're right. We have time. Good. Then is there some place we can get a drink? Yeah. Come on. At Kravis Antiques in Brightside, a young woman wearing a large hat and dark sunglasses wanders in. <laughs> Not again, Ms. Garcia. As I told you yesterday and the day before, I would appreciate if you take your leave from this town. I'm just here to shop. Can I not shop? This ruse fools no one. What ruse? These are my sunglasses. That's not what I meant. Stephanie takes off her hat and sunglasses. I rented an apartment a few streets over and it needs to be furnished. Well, the furniture store down the street is a brilliant place to start. I know the owner. Oh, I know you know the owner. Aha! You've given yourself away. If you were just in town to shop and furnish a flat, you wouldn't be spying on me and my... friends. I wasn't attempting subterfuge. I'm here for a reason, and I will not give up until you agree to help me. Well, I am not going to, so if you would kindly get out of... (laughs) What's so funny? I'm just experiencing deja vu. Deja vu? Yes, deja vu. Deja vu? Daniel... (laughs) Daniel said the same thing to me when I first came to Brightside. Repeatedly, he said, get out. But you didn't. I should have. No, you shouldn't have. Look, Stephanie, I understand you. You do not understand, or you would not be fighting me. Really, I'm not in... Sit there. I failed Daniel and Abby No, Abby betrayed us all And Daniel knew we could fall Now the war is upon us The moment to set your course right No redemption for me is in sight I'm no use to this battle, despite what you say. The evil we're facing would have come for us all either way. There was never any escape. Yours, a voice that speaks reason when tempers and fear have. The rest of us blinded to answers so simple and The 
there's no spell I can cast To add strength to your cause Change the ending at the last hour It's not in my power Never thought you were a coward Miss Garcia, if you aim to wound me, then you need not bother. I know my failings, and this time the consequence is like no other. If the suburb she conquers. How the pages yet blank will conclude, no one living can guess. But nonetheless, Rufus, you cannot protest. I want you to go. Answer is no. <laughs> Pretty words, but I'm knackered, so please go. I'll be back tomorrow. Fine, but for now, just go. All right, for now. In the subworlds. <laughs> the evacuation is well underway, Alexis, but so many don't want to go. Amara? She's safe, as is Sophie. They left with my husband. Good. I wasn't sure they would. She didn't want to listen to me, but like her. Yes, my husband could convince grass to turn purple. <laughs> you married well. Amara and I. Are uh, you reconciled? You're strong. Stronger than ever. Well, you've known her longer than I have. If you say things are all right... They are. She adores you, and she's glad to have you here. Thank you, Karnak. You're an ace brother-in-law. Oh, uh, you're just lucky I was available to be your lieutenant. If you still had Zagor in that position... Uh, don't remind me. He hasn't been seen in months. Good. I'll be chuffed if it stays that way. You may not say that if things get ugly down here. We may need every able body we can muster. Why? As you said, the evacuation was... I said not everyone has left, nor will they. Besides, this is our home. It has been for generations. Our people will stand a temporary evacuation, but they'll be back. What if there's nothing to come back to? It's our job to make sure that doesn't happen. We'll see who the real monsters are. You're not leaving? Nor are you. Well, I'm staying to reason with Abby. I don't think that it would be... I'm not leaving. I'm not sure that's a good idea. If I can't convince Abby to back off, then... Then we die together. <laughs> I'd rather not die at all. Nor I. So you'd better be able to talk this Abby out of her invasion. I'm not sure I'll be able to prevent it from going all to pot. You'd better. We're all counting on you, Alexis. I know. Outside a bar, in the after. Ah. I love that I can get drunk here. <laughs> it has been so long. Because of the Chosen One stuff? Oh, even before that. I'm so tall. <laughs> and it takes so much. I think the Chosen One's powers were always inside of you. <laughs> well... They clearly aren't now. They are. But like I said, you can manipulate this place. Now, hold on. Let's wait a second-ish. You're just as much sober as me drunk. Why are you sober? Because I want to be. Damn it, now I'm sober. 
<laughs> I don't want to be. Sorry. It's fine. No, Daniel, it isn't. Listen, I told you, I didn't come- I've been patient all day. It's time to talk. I don't want to It's talk. about Abby. What about Abby? She needs your help. I'm dead. So? So how the hell am I supposed to help her if I'm dead? She's on a dangerous path, Daniel. One that there may be no coming back from. Since you died- Emphasis she... on died. Since you died, she has turned darker, colder. She's bent on revenge and has a single-minded purpose. I can see a bit of the possibilities and she's- Wait, wait. Josh, can you see the future? No, not exactly, Wait, but well then how do you even know what's going on with Abby? If you're here! I can see things, Daniel. We all can here, if you want to. Things back on Earth, as they are now, as they've been, as they might be. Abby needs you. The world needs you. I. Am. Dead! You don't have to be. What? There's a way. A way to go back. Don't tease me, Josh. I'm not. It's not easy. And and really, they're only rumors, but if we- <laughs> You've got to be kidding me, man! You had my hopes up for a minute! Don't do that! Daniel, she needs you. It is not fair to say that to me when there is nothing I can do about it. But you can, Daniel. You just need to be the hero I you tried, Josh! And I ended up here! Well, you've got to try again. Because without you, I don't see a good outcome. There once was a boy. Is this going to be about me? Who by age 12 was as tall as a tree. Okay, it is. But despite his height. He was quite short-sighted Life made him shrink from all risk or adventure Kept his back to the wall of any room he would enter His woes had frozen any hope or notion Of love or happiness Except one friend so true He could not guess what for her he would do it's never the hero we think will take the stage It's never as easy as what's written on the page Tales of strength and destiny won't make a cold heart brave The hero's just the one who's chosen to have something left to say What heartless jerk would let the world around him fall? Exactly! And who wouldn't fight until he'd given it his oh, all? I see where you're going. I pushed aside my pride, I tried. You died. I died. Fine! You've earned your rest, now you can lounge away the days. Forget that you have one enormous card left to play To change the game and reclaim the name of Humanity and peace, life as we knew it What heartless jerk given the chance wouldn't do I see what it you, did there. you were never the hero I was never you the thought hero. you needed to you be You needed me to be Too many turns of So many things I didn't see, see. Let's stop pretending No, you need to pretend That maybe The hero's just the one For whom death is in the air Who would want to go back? Someone who gives a damn The others will lead the attack They can do what you can There's one evil only one broken soul only you can mend Don't Don't bring her up again You know it's true 
I'm sorry to have to say You need to give her heart sway Nothing else will get in her It's never a hero who stops short of the final fight. It's not in my power to take this mess and set it right. Never thought you were a coward. You were never the hero. Just a boy with mountains to climb. But Daniel, you're our hero. Say yes, just one more That was a nice song, Josh. <laughs> but it changes nothing. Daniel, I think I need you... to get some sleep. I mean, you don't have to sleep here Good if night. you don't. Good night. At the ULP headquarters in Canada. Uh, Grizzit, uh, might I speak to you, I? Uh, of course, Voldaire. What shall we speak about? It's a delicate subject, I expect. There is no need to hit around the shrub. Say it. <laughs> what do you think of uh, Miss Reynolds' plans for invasion? They are most glorious. It's just, you seemed hesitant when she first raised them. I was not hesitant. I was just surprised. I did not expect Abby to invade. But it is the wise thing for a leader to do. Stomp out one's enemy before they have a chance to attack. You really think the subworlds will attack us, I? Did you ever live in the subworlds, Voldaire? No, I... I grew up on my ranch. Oh, I miss it so. Well, I did live in the subworlds, and there are many, many bloodthirsty individuals down there who would slit our throats if they had the chance. How many of those do you think were not in Mambo's army? Not many. Most would have jumped at the chance to march. Right. So if they aren't who's down there, I... Younglings may become bloodthirsty beasts. Better to slay them now before I am old and feeble and cannot. I guess so. I... You have a problem with the plan, Boldair? No, Jaleen. I was just getting Grizzit's opinion. And what is your opinion? I don't rightly know, I. That's why I ask the question. That was a good decision, Voldaire. I am most wise and happy to tell you what your opinion should be. Thank you, Grezet. You have given me much to consider. You're not here to think, Voldaire. You're here to follow Ms. Reynolds' orders. I am well aware of what I am here for, Jaleen. Are you? I shall take my leave now. I. Goodbye, Voldaire. I hope we chat again soon. I. I'm not so sure about that shapeshifter. Voldaire is good people, Jeline Santiago. You should focus on your own preparation. I... he... Damn it, Voldaire. <laughs> yes, Grezit. You're right. Of course I am. Grezit the Green is always right. <clears throat> in Nan's Furniture Store in Brightside, Ohio. Rufus, what a nice surprise. Well, you're always complaining about my settee. I thought you might assist me in choosing a new one. Oh, you love your old sofa. Yes, but you don't, and if we're going to keep spending lots of time on it, we should have one we both like. I, are you... are you asking oh, me... Oh, I mean, I didn't plan to, but I mean, I, I suppose you are over all the time anyway, so I... I like having my own place. Oh. For now. <laughs> all right, <laughs> 
Rufus, is something bothering you? What do you mean? It's Stephanie, isn't it? She still hasn't left town. No, she hasn't. But I've told her no, firmly, every time, and I plan to continue doing so. You shouldn't. Pardon? You belong with her. I have no interest romantically in Stephanie Garcia. What? No, no, of course not. But you belong in her world, though. I am quite satisfied with what we have here. You and I, our life, our shops. (laughs) No, you aren't. And that's okay. Nan, really, I, I don't, and I don't want to lose you. Not when we've reunited. I was missing someone. Missing you for so long. Do you know why I agreed to date you again after you just up and left the first time? No. Because I enjoy spending time with you. And I knew you were a good man. I have all I need. I don't need to be in a relationship, and I certainly don't want to be mixed up in the part of your life where that stuff happens. Well, I'm I'm not asking you to. But it was fun seeing your passion in your eyes. I miss it. I haven't seen that since you came back to town. What are you saying, Nan? I'm saying you don't need to choose. You can have me. And this. And you can have that. You need both to make you whole. I don't, really. I... You do, Rufus. Trust me. Whether you know it or not, you do. But you and I, we just... I'll be here when you get back. But you need to go. With Stephanie. Stop whatever it is she's trying to prevent from happening. Then come back and tell me about it. That's all I need. I... All right. But don't you dare sleep with her. I would never. I know. In the after. You're back. I came to say goodbye, Daniel. Goodbye? But you're just going to give up on me? I can't force you to do anything. You need to decide for yourself what you're going to do. If you'd stop trying to convince me, I mean, I'd love just to hang out with you, Josh. Like we used to. I'd love that, too. But my time here is up. What? I stay to help. To help Abby, to make up for what I did, the spell I put on her. And and the best way that I could help is to tell you that you're needed. I fulfilled my unfinished business. No, you haven't. I, I didn't agree to anything. I didn't need to get you to agree. I just needed to tell you. But... But if I don't go on your crazy mission to get back to Earth and save everyone, then you didn't help anyone. Daniel, you and I both know that you're going to do the right thing. Eventually. You always do. I am not. You don't... Not? I mean, not without you, anyway. You don't need me. I just get ripped apart by monsters again. This is your journey, not mine. But I don't even know where where I'm going or, or how to chase these rumors you mentioned. Someone else will help you with that. Other people have unfinished business too, you know? And, and you won't be the only one who cares about what's going on down there. You're that confident that you don't need to stick around and convince me any further? Yes. Why? Because honestly, Josh, no matter what you just said, I have no intention of trying to go back. Especially without you by my side. You will. How do you know? Because of the last thing I haven't shown you yet. The one thing I held back so I could say goodbye before I disappeared. And what's that? Look. Josh hands Daniel a mirror. But it isn't a mirror because it doesn't reflect back. It's more of a window shaped like a mirror. Okay. What am I looking at? Whatever you want to see. Josh, don't play these games. I don't... (gasps) There's Abby. (laughs) And Crescent! Oh, I can't believe! I can't believe I actually miss Crescent! But I do! Ah. Mm. Oh. Oh, and Goofy Alfredo! Oh, I can't say I miss those S's, but damn, it's good to see him. Oh, and some of the kids whose, oh, God, names I don't remember. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, of course Abby kept the group going. Oh, and of course, of course she's still in charge. Oh, she can do anything. Oh, she's amazing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, why is she... Josh! Josh! What? 
Where'd you go? Daniel looks all around, but Josh Wallace is gone. (laughs) After a long, loud, really ugly cry. I don't ugly cry! (laughs) All right. Daniel looks back into the object, and this time, he doesn't just look. He watches. Act 3, in the ULP headquarters in Canada. We're ready, Miss Reynolds. I'm ready, Miss Reynolds. Good. Has anyone seen Voldaire? Um, no, I I haven't. Uh, Nor have I. Probably left like the others. Excuse me, Jolene? I just mean, a lot of people can't handle this, Miss Reynolds. Uh, can't handle your plans. Define a lot of people. Look how many have left. I... I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Weed out the ones who can't take it. I didn't tell him he could leave. Where did he go? Uh, uh, I don't know, Miss Reynolds. I don't even know if he did leave. Well, if he's not here, he left. And we need to bring him back before he blabs something to someone about us. Now, find him, Misty. Yes, ma'am. Right away. Alfredo, do you have a spell that can locate him? If he's in the compound, yes, I can find him. I just need an, need an object from my study. Fine. Go with Misty. I want you both back here before we can take off. Of course, Abby. We shall return momentarily. Are we ready to march the troops, Miss Reynolds? Yes, Jolene. As soon as Misty returns to open the portal, have them line up. With pleasure. Are we ready to go through the portal, Abby Reynolds? Yes, Grezit. I just gave the order. Ooh, this is going to be glorious! It will be what it needs to be. Which is glorious! I'm glad I have you, Grezit. And I am glad to be had by you, Abby Reynolds. Shall we proceed to your place in front, Miss Reynolds? Yes, Jolene. Lead the way. Today we march to war against an evil foe. We will be triumphant, this I know. Because our cause is just, because our might is strong, in my heart I truly know that we are not wrong. Battle's a bloody business, not for the faint of heart. I've worked so hard to get here, it cannot come apart. I used to live in fear, hiding in Daniel's shadow. But I have found my power, I'm the star of the show. It's a great day for war, a great day for war. Who even cares what we're fighting for? To march forth with Abby, my bestie at my side. There's nowhere enemies could ever hide. Because Because our our cause cause is just, because our might is strong, we go forward with confidence. No doubt doubt we're we're headstrong. Am I doing the right thing here? How can I be really sure? I want to believe in Abby, but her heart may be impure. She seems more concerned with conquering than what is morally found. Will she be satisfied before? Everything's burned to the ground. Because our cause is just, because our might is secure, our mission is one of nobility. Of this, we are sure. Fighting's not something I relish, not something I would seek out. But when there are threats to my mission, I must be 
devout The ultimate evil will die The ultimate evil will fall And when that day comes I will have answered the call Whether this journey is long or short I must believe in my skills it's up to me to save the world from all its terrible ills. Today we march to war against an evil foe. We will be triumphant, this I know. Because I am owed. Voldaire is not anywhere within our compound. Ugh. Well, we don't need him. Misty, you're in charge until I get back. I, I'm sorry, Miss Reynolds. I, I, you're I staying I... here. Do you have a problem with that? Um, yes, Miss Reynolds. It will be my pleasure. Good. Let's go. We have a subworld to stomp out and an ultimate evil to find. Misty, open the portal. Right away, Miss Reynolds. Here we go! In the subworlds. It's a good day to die. Connock, I didn't think he was so macabre. But I'm, I'm not. I, I heard it on a television show, and I'm endeavoring to live up to the mantra. <laughs> well, if it's all the same to you, I'd rather live. As would I, Alexis. Rufus! Hello, Alexis. I heard you might need some help. Oh, what took you so long? He was being stubborn. Yes, well, I'm here now. I'm pleased you are. You too, Stephanie. Yes. Four of us against an army have much better odds than two. Where, uh, where is the rest of your force? We sent them all away. There's no path, decimated as we are down here, by which we could defeat the ULP by force. Then why are you still here? I was hoping Abby might listen to reason. Ha! <laughs> Not likely. So it's true, she's... Yes. Damn. If Daniel were here... But he's not. I stayed with Abby as long as I could, but she has gone too far off the deep end. Now, that is our mate you're talking about. Well, your mate is evil. Deal with it. Well, that's not exactly well, that sounds fair. sounds fair to me. Stephanie, since you recently quit her group, won't she be angry to see you standing among us? Possibly. Maybe you should leave. Alexis and I have departed Abby's group as well at one time or another. Are you saying I should face her alone because I don't- We all stay. Fine. But if I die, I'm blaming you. All of you. That seems reasonable. Uh, we haven't been properly introduced. I'm Rufus Reginald Rochester. I know who you are. Your reputation precedes you. I'm Carnock. My brother-in-law and lieutenant. Ah, a pleasure, Carnock. Forgive me under the circumstances if I don't return the sentiment. I understand. So, what's the plan? You didn't bring one? Well, I I'm here to assist. Well, a plan would have been a great way to do so. <laughs> so, no plan. No plan. Right. Hmm. Well, I might be able to whip up a trick or two to slow them down. A short distance away in a sparsely populated part of North Dakota, only hours later, an army has marched through a portal and is making their way through a thick forest. The information we have has the entrance to the subworlds near here. In the middle of a forest? Are you sure your our information is correct? Yes. It matches the intel we have from Lexus and what Grevis has told us. This doesn't look right to me. Nor I. I have used this way in before. Unless there have been many changes since Greza the Green came through, this is not how the entrance to these subworlds looks. How does it look, Greza? It is just a cave. I do not see any cave amidst all of these trees. They are making me angry. Move, you sexy, sultry trees, or I will destroy you. Save it for the battle, Greza. Alfredo, could this be magic? 
Yes, I believe it is. I rather basic spell. Alfredo waves his hand and the forest disappears, replaced by a sparse woods. The mouth of a cave is not far away. Well, there it is. Hold. Alfredo, check for any other tricks. Already doing so. Alfredo casts spells, reaching out and looking for whatever other roadblocks Rufus has tossed in their way. I have disabled several traps, but what if they've enacted a non-magical means to slow us down at the well? Then I, Gresset the Green, will tear through them as easily as wet paper. Then I will find those sniveling cowards who did this and I will haul them back out of their dark cave and into the light, where I will hold a legally bindingly blinding trial. Then I will serve as prosecutor with one of those fancy powdery wigs and one for Mr. Smashy, of course, and then I will How take- about we just proceed with caution? That will work, too. Grezit, Jeline, you go first. The rest of us will follow. Alfredo, start casting Chosen One protection spells on all of us and the army, as we discussed. Yes, Abby. It doesn't take long for the force to make it down to where Alexis and his group are waiting for them in an empty, cavernous room. Grezit, Jeline, and the soldiers stop, confused. Hello, Grezit. Hello, Rufus Reginald Rochester! I have missed you! And you too, Stephanie Garcia! And even you, Alex- I mean, Alexis Augustus Armentrout! And you, who I do not know, but would probably miss if I did know you- Stop it, Grizzit! They're the enemy! We are not the enemy! He is right! Tis une racleur de bidet, Jeline, and the army behind you! No, no, that's not what I meant. Abby and Alfredo, having hung back behind the invading army, make their way to the front. Why have we stopped? Alexis Augustus Armentrout and Rufus Reginald Rochester I are can re- see, Grezit. The spells were you, Rufus? Yes. A basic spell. What? I didn't know. Didn't stop us much, did they? I didn't expect them to. They served their purpose. What do you mean? Uh, it alerted them to us approaching. Right, so we could come out and meet you. Stand aside. It won't matter. My people are gone. They're not people. Gone? Where? Where you can't find them. Somewhere safe. We'll search every square inch. Be my guest. The subworld's a mess if you won't find them. Fine. You want to play games? We'll play games. Grezit, Jeline, take the army and burn every building you find to the ground. Wait, wait, you, you can't. We worked hard to build the settlement. If there are only four of you, I'm pretty sure I can do whatever I want. Not without going through me. And me. You're prepared to die to save some buildings? These are homes. Monster homes. You protected your followers, fine, but I intend to send a message so I didn't waste time coming all the way out here. Stand aside now, Abby, we don't want to fight you. Yes, please don't make us do this, though we're prepared to. You used to be our comrade, you used to be our friend. This shouldn't be the way that things end. We won't let you do this, we won't clear your path. If you want to get through us, you will face our wrath. Alexis. (laughs) You can't be serious, your army's a sad joke. I'm about to laugh so hard I may choke. Abby. No, no, Rufus, you betrayed me here. You're on the wrong side now, the consequence is severe. You would threaten your old buddies, kill us just like dogs, to satisfy your ego when you know you're wrong. I am not wrong, I am in the right. Yours is not a justified fight. Innocent people. Monsters. Even soldiers the same. Their lives are worth something, this is no mere game. (laughs) Ooh, 
I do not like this. Not one little bit. I am loyal to Abby. The rebellion must quit. Please don't make me do this. I don't want to slaughter friends. Alexis and Rufus give up now and beg to make amends. Grezit, you have to see now. She's off the far deep end. She's not the woman on which we once could depend. Shut up, you traitors, cowards. You don't know what you say. You have no standing with me. Your hearts do you betray. You've lost your way and more. You're protecting the wrong side. You should be standing with me. Damn your ridiculous pride. Abby, you've missed the point. Abby, you're not who you were. The Abby I knew had compassion. What happened to her? Abby was warm and gentle, the best of us all. What had to happen to make you so far fall? Daniel. We understand your heartbreak. We understand your pain. But please understand us, Abby, and hear our refrain. We can't possibly let you do this as much as we hold you dear. So please lay down your weapons once more, be our peer. Please try to hear. No. So, are you really prepared to murder us, your friends, just to set fire to a few empty structures, Abby? Not today, Rufus. But the next time we meet, I won't be so generous. We are not friends anymore. I, I am still your friend, Rufus Reginald Rochester, even though I am very mad at you right now for stopping my bestie, Abby Reynolds. Mm. Turn the army around. Let's go. But the uh, plan. You heard her, Jeline. Hover, face! Forward, march! That was close. Too close. We want nothing. She will be back. What will we do next time? We've got to be ready for her. But how? I don't know. But I must leave for now. I'll call you, and if she marches again... I'm coming with you. That's not necessary. We're stronger together than apart, Karnak. You'll oversee things until I return? Of course. Don't let them even come... Yes. We will find new homes elsewhere. I will send you word where. Thank you. I'm going with you both, too. Really? But you don't... I thought you might, Stephanie. We're in this together. In the after. Why, Abby? Why? This isn't because, because of me, is it? Oh, God. It can't be. I wish I could talk to you right now. Josh was right. She needs me. Thought I was done, my sword laid down, journey at an end. But I can't stay here, standing by, while she descends. Abby was the love of my life now she's the love of my death I must somehow get to her after my very last breath it is my destiny to save her and the world 
Everything I am and was is because of her. Daniel was killed, his body cold, held him in my arms. Now I must avenge him on those who did him harm. Daniel was the love of my life, and now he's only in death. I must somehow do what he failed with his very last breath. It is my destiny, this is no mere whim. Everything I am and was is because of I'm facing a threat bigger than any before. Do I have what it takes to handle what's in store? I've never been a hero, never sought to be in charge. But with the danger so near, looming oh so large, it is my destiny. The world is in my hands No one else can possibly do What the moment demands Daniel, why are you Making me do this? It should be you It should be me I wish you were here, I wish. It is my destiny, I have no other choice. Abby is my destiny, I can hear. Daniel Kravitz Chosen One Volume 4 has plenty of surprises left. I'll hope you join us over the next couple of years as we see what happens. Who will win? Who will die? Can anyone be saved? Come back and find out. <laughs> It's all been done. Radio Hour, number 400. Daniel Kravitz' chosen one, number 50, Two Worlds, was wit written by Jerome Wetzel and Kristen Green and directed by Kristen Green. The original Daniel Kravitz theme song was composed by Nathan Haley with lyrics by Jerome Wetzel. The musical tracks were composed and performed instrumentally by Kristen Green with the instrumental assistance from J.T. Walker and Tristan Seidenberg. The episode starred Darren Essler as the narrator as well as Carnock, Nathan Haley as Daniel Kravitz, Wendy Parks as Abby Reynolds, Shane Stefanchik as Rufus Reginald Rochester, Ryan Yoey as Grezet the Green, Joe Morales as Alexis Augustus Armentrout, Katie Boisenault as Stephanie Garcia, Chase McCants as the real, real Josh Wallace, Keith Jackson as Alfredo, Samantha Stark as Nan, Sam Clements as Voldaire, Megan Overholt as Jeline Santiago, and Elizabeth McElarney as Misty Tanner. Our technical director in It's All Been Done Radio Hour is Shane Stefanchik. Our music director is Kristen Green. Our Foley artist is J.T. Walker. 
The podcast was edited by Kristen Green. Also, special thank you to Michelle Hansen, who took photography for this episode, and Chase McCants, who recorded video, available on our YouTube page if you'd like to see a performance. We want to thank Circle 270 Media, which this podcast is a part of, and Boxlin Media, our host performance space, next show on Saturday, March 11th at 5 p.m., featuring the return of Privates and a new episode of The Paul. So come check that out. Please support us at patreon.com slash IABD. Have a great week. It's All Been Done presents Who's Got the Time?